Hey, hello everyone, this is Dark Nomad, and looking behind me, you would think that it was, <clears throat> that it was bright sunshine coming in through, and it was the middle of the day, but it is actually 7.20 in the evening. Um, I got a, uh, I finally, well, broke down and bought myself a webcam, um, <clears throat> because it just works that much better. I'm, I'm not having any issues with this, at least as far as I know yet, that I've been having with iPhones and iPads and especially GoPros. So I figured I'd try this out, at least for the table talks, I can do this and have a little bit more input and control with um, applications and things of that nature. Oh, you need to, you need to quiet down there, buddy. You're snoring, man. That dude, <laughs> he is... He is out cold. Um, but this is not going to be a very long video. Um, this is an addendum to my video from the other day about nomads need to stop camping in cities. Um, I, I, I still absolutely believe that that is the case. Um, I find it kind of a... Uh, amusing the uh the individual i was talking about that well that shall remain unnamed um just posted a video this afternoon early evening what have you and he was actually camping in the forest and apparently he's been having issues with his vehicle so he couldn't go as he couldn't go to a dispersed camping a free dispersed camping location he ended up having to go and pay for the location he was in and now he's complaining about the heat oh here's the issue um this guy has camped at high elevations before and he can't deal with the, he can't deal with the elevation or he doesn't give his body a chance to deal with the elevation every year when i've come up to flagstaff or kai bob or up in the colorado mountains I have to go through a transitional period and, and it really, really kicks my butt, especially if I was after spending half the year, basically at low elevations, sea level or just above sea level. It's um, difficult when you add seven, eight, nine, ten thousand feet to the equation. And it is um, it's difficult to breathe, especially walking that guy. Um that guy down there, I'm walk, taking him for a walk every morning and sometimes in the evening, you know, twice a day deal. It's difficult to breathe. You, it, it feels like, I mean, I quit smoking. We're going on probably about 11 years now. About 11 years ago, I quit smoking after smoking for about 28 years. And it feels like I'm smoking again. Because towards the end of me finally deciding to quit smoking, it was difficult for me to walk up a flight of steps, let alone multiple flights of stairs. So it was time to make that decision and get off the uh, get off the uh, cancer sticks. And I don't regret it at all. But like I said, you get in high elevation, and it almost feels like I've been smoking again. But after about a week, maybe two. I'm, I'm acclimated to the environment and I'm not having any issues that I usually have when I first get up into high elevation. Like I said, this guy, he can't deal with high elevation. So if, if you're going to have, if you're going to camp low elevation, even if you're camping close to the ocean, um, California, I mean, geez, the entire West coast, they're in the, they're in the midst of, you know, they're, they're like the catalyst in the beginning of the heat wave that's crossing the country right now. Um, there are places on the West Coast that are triple digit, and there's just no getting away from that unless you go into the mountains. As the saying goes, you lose about three degrees of temperature for every thousand feet that you climb. So if you go up to 10,000 foot elevation, that's a 30 degree difference in temperature. So if it's 100 degrees, you're looking at about 70 and if you get a breeze going, then it's even that much cooler. And at night, it actually it can actually get downright cold. Um, even now, this time of year, it can get intolerably chilly. 
So and to the point where you need a blanket, you know, not, not so much heat, but you actually need a blanket or throw or something to put over yourself to keep warm overnight. But um, speaking of the West Coast, um, I came across a couple of new var- news articles and I, and I dug around and found some photographs of the um, the location. It is those I'm, I'm not even going to call. I'm not going to give it give them the dignity of calling them nomads because as far as I'm concerned or not, they're homeless people. Um, now, some of them are homeless people that work because from what I understand, some of them, well, let me put it here. There, there's, there's a, there's a stretch of highway. I'm not sure which highway it is one or five or whatever the heck it is, but it's a it's specific Pacific coast highway. And it is apparently what is that beeping? I don't know. Um, it's in the um, Malibu area of California. At least this is the one that they're doing a report on because the residents of that location and probably people that transition through that location are, are, are complaining. And I have some photos I want to upload. I'll show them towards the end of the video so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but they, um, there are vans, there are, um, tallable trailers, there are fifth wheels, there are class C's, there's, I think I even saw a class A or two that are parked on the ocean side of the Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu, and they're just living there. They don't, they don't move. They don't leave. And you would think one would think, well, they have to leave to get water. No, they're not filling up their they're not filling up their fresh water tanks. Um, I guess they're going and buying gallons of water or getting have water containers, much like I do, and and that's what they're doing. Um, well, they have to move to empty their 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 gray and their black tanks. No, they're not doing that either. They are literally hooking up the. Uh, what do you call? I don't, they're not hoses per se, but um, the 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 dump attachments. You know, I guess you can call them a hose. As a it's a really big hose, but they're hooking up and they're dumping their waste, their feces, their urine, their shower water, their sink water from washing dishes, and what have you. They're dumping it into the Pacific Ocean. Excuse my French, but I bullshit you not. They are dumping their waste water into the Pacific Ocean. When I heard that, I, I was I was floored. I'm like, I you you got to be kidding me. But no, apparently the um, California Department of Environmental Health Department has, on numerous occasions, tested the water in that area along the coast where these guys camp at, and. It is filled with bacteria and feces and, 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 and just, it, it's, it's, you can't, you can't swim in that. You will get deathly ill, much like our athletes got ill after they swim in that nasty French water or in the Olympics in France. But, um, yeah, you will get deathly ill if you swim in the water in the, in the water around that location. It is. It is. Oh, my God. I I, I can't imagine. I I just it it blows my mind that 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 people would would do that. Um, And I guess, you know, I guess they don't have any choice, especially if they are truly destitute and homeless and don't have the money to gas their gas up their vehicles and move them to a location. Now, like I said, some of them apparently work. They, They they park there and. I guess they have secondary vehicles, especially the towables. They go to work and then they come back in the evening. I guess they set up a little community. I have a photograph I'm going to share that has one vehicle, though. You look on the outside, it's like it's a Class A. You look on the outside of it, and there's just garbage bags and trash and junk piled up around this vehicle. And you're not going to tell me at all <clears throat> that that vehicle moves at any point in time. So it is truly amazing the um what what's going on there. Um now I know that Governor Newsom hmm, yeah has um at one point I mean 
this dude, he, apparently he was spending millions and millions and millions of, of, of California taxpayers dollars allegedly helping the homeless. And they still have a horrible homeless problem in the state of California. Um, when that Supreme Court decision came down here not too long ago, he realized that he wasn't going to be able to, I don't know, do with whatever he was doing with that money he claimed was going to help homeless people. So what he's been doing now, he is passed an executive order telling them the homeless encampments and what have you, everything else, they have been cleaning them up. So I don't know what they're doing with these people. I don't know where these people are going. Um, they, they, they tear these people's tents down and throw them in a dumpster. What it, where are they supposed to go and what are they supposed to do after that? I can tell you where some of them are going. According to my buddy who's still down in court site, he says, you've had a large, usually we have transients that show up around the, um, <clears throat> during the season when all of the snowbirds come down in the hopes of panhandling and getting money from them or robbing them blind as the case may be. Um, he says the homeless population has increased exponentially in the courtside area. So that's one of the locations. I think a lot of them are going to end up going to, they're going to end up going to BLM land and national forest and trying to set up encampments. And like I said, what's going to end up happening is going to affect people like me who, I mean, I can move, I can pick up and move, but it, it, it's just, it's going to, it is going to very much sadden me when I go to a location that I have historically gone to to camp and find that area closed because you have had homeless people that have set up there in the past or prior to me getting there and wrecked the area to the point where they closed that area down. It's been a problem. It's probably always going to be a problem, but now it's really, really, really starting to become an issue for those of us who have chosen a life of travel to find some place. Now, one would say, well, you can go to a paid campground. Yeah, I could go to a paid campground, but it will eventually get to the point where that won't be fiscally. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um uh, plain old, I, I just won't be capable of doing that. Um, they have exponentially raised the prices of all of these campgrounds over the past three years. And they have primarily raised the prices because all of these people that couldn't go to vacation in Mexico and Europe and Canada and what have you, you know, they couldn't jet set all over the world because of the, um, the woo flu. They, um, <laughs> they decided, well, I'm going to buy an RV. I'm going to go camping or I'm going to buy a big fancy tent. I'm going to go camping. So they overloaded the campgrounds and they're just as bad sometimes as the homeless because these are people that are not used. They're used to being in a place where somebody picks their garbage up inside of a densely populated city. And that's not the case out of here. Is pack it in, pack it out. You take your garbage with you and you find some place to dispose of it after you leave the area that you've camped in. But these people don't understand that. And they say, well, I'll just leave it here and somebody will eventually come and pick it up. I'm not going to harp on that. I've harped on it before, but I, um, I, I don't, I don't know how this is all going to, going to end up, um, and then I, then I have another, I have a subscriber that told me, sent me a, um, in a comment that he's, um, he's basically up in Oregon all the time. And he says it was um, discovered that there were some homeless people that were boondocking <laughs> and they, they were, they were the cause of some of the big forest fires that they had up in Oregon this year. So, um, and that's how that one fire was a tunnel fire up here and around the Flagstaff area a couple of years ago. That fire started because you had an individual that was, um, taking his used toilet paper, as he says, and he was trying to burn it probably in the middle of a burn ban. And it's all, like I said before, it's all coniferous forest out here. It's all pine. These, these, trees 
ooze, sticky, very flammable pine sap. And all you need is just the tiniest ember, like the tiniest ember that would float from a piece of toilet paper burning in a campfire, float onto one of those trees and it will catch and it will, it will go up like nobody's business. So they caught this dude and I don't know, I don't, I haven't looked up, but they caught him and they were planning on throwing the book at him because it was thousands and thousands of acres that burned because he couldn't hold on to his toilet paper and find someplace else to, to, to dispose of it. He needed to burn it. I don't think that's a big deal because I burn cardboard from things that I've ordered, you know, so, so I'm not, you know, taking up space in somebody's dumpster. But I don't do it outside of, I don't do it during a burn ban. You know, if, if, if I can't burn it, then I throw it in the trash. If I, heck, if I can burn it, I'll throw it in the fire ring and I'll get rid of it. Bestest, easiest way to do it. Bestest. At any rate, um, that's going to be it for today, folks. Um, I have uh, another topic that I want to broach. This is probably going to raise some hackles, shackles, something or the other. It's probably going to get some people upset. Um, but it's something that's kind of been, I don't, I won't say weighing on my mind, but it's something that's kind of been in the back of my mind and it's been in the back of my mind for a couple of years since a incident that occurred early on in my nomadic journey. And I want to hit on it again, but, um, that, like I said, that's it for today. So if you could please like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel and please leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. I like talking to you and, uh, you know, give me, give me your, give me your views. Give me your opinion on what's going on with this thing. You know, you're a nomad or you're a homeless person. You can't, you can't be both at the same time. I don't think, you know, go on your side of the fence or pick your lane and stay in it. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but sometimes it just is what it is. At any rate, um, once again, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you folks later. All right? Take care.